Do you wish you could take free kicks like this? Stick around and I'll show you how to hit shots over the wall and back under the crossbar. Hi guys and welcome to this technique training video. Today we'll take you through every single step to be a deadly free kick taker. The first three steps are all about generating spin. You can practice these steps without a wall or even a goal. Let's go through the biomechanics to get maximum top spin. Step one is foot position. Make sure that you have an open foot. Make sure that you maintain that open foot all the way through the strike and you are trying to make contact with the middle of the ball and the middle of your foot. Step two is ball contact. Try and make a thin contact on the ball. You are trying to go through the back of the ball and catch a very, very small part of it. The main thing that we're looking for here is an upward contact through the ball, which is gonna help you generate top spin. See this example. Remember at the moment, we are only trying to generate spin. Don't catch a lot of the ball. Just try and make a really, really thin contact with as little as the ball as possible to generate that top spin. Step three is about your standing foot. You're trying to make sure that the pendulum of your leg is on the upswing as you make contact with the ball. Therefore, the standing foot needs to come further away than it normally would for a usual strike. If your standing foot is too close, you will hit the middle of the ball and the pendulum of the leg will be on the way down as you strike it, which will really struggle to generate any topspin. Now you know the first three steps, practice these steps together, but do not hit the ball hard. What we don't want is power and force going through the ball, which will ruin the technique. So remember, we are trying to maximize spin here. Have a practice and get as much top spin on the ball as you can. Okay, so now you should be generating more top spin on the ball if you've practiced the first three steps. So now we can start to apply some power and look at step four. Do not approach the ball from a wide angle. That will generate spin and curl, which is not the type of spin we're trying to generate on this strike. Do not approach the ball from right behind it either. That will struggle to generate follow through and height, and you will really struggle to use a top spin technique if you come straight down the line of the ball. The correct approach comes from 30 to 45 degrees. I like to take two large steps back from the ball and one big step to the left. This gives me roughly the right approach of about 30 to 35 degrees. As you then strike through the ball, you should be able to generate top spin and follow through, but also should take bend out of the ball because you're not coming from too wide an angle. Step five is about your follow through. And the follow through is very important to generate power, but it's really, really vital that we make sure we are generating spin before we add power. As you watch this example, notice how aggressive we are on the follow through. Exaggerate the height of the leg on the upswing and be explosive in the striking motion. Whilst we are trying to generate power, do not forget the basics of the technique. When it comes to hitting a ball and hitting a ball hard, I like to say that exertion ruins the execution. If you overexert yourself here and try to add too much power too early, you will struggle with this technique. So make sure we generate spin, then add power. Step six is aiming the ball. And where do you aim when you strike? Once you've got height and spin on the ball, you should start to see some dip on your shots, especially once you add the power to the top spin. I like to aim above the height of the crossbar, knowing that the dip will bring the ball back down. If you aim too low, for instance, just over the height of the wall, this will mean that the ball will dip quickly and actually land or maybe even bounce before the goal line. If you're striking the ball correctly, you shouldn't get any side spin or curl. This means you don't have to allow for curl like you would do in bending a free kick. Sometimes when I'm bending a free kick to the left, I'll aim slightly to the right, knowing that the bend will bring the ball back inside the post. If you're striking the ball correctly, you shouldn't need to do that with this technique. Whilst you are generating spin, it is all top spin, and this flight of the ball should be very straight. You'll see from the examples here that most of these shots are going in a very straight line, very few of them going wide, and very few of them having any curl on them. Step seven is corrections, or what are you doing wrong? If you're getting a lot of top spin on the ball but struggling to generate any real height, what that means is you are catching a very, very small amount of the ball and you are skimming the back of the ball but not generating enough force through it to generate the height and lift that we need. If you're hitting the ball high but it's not coming back down, you have the opposite problem. You're contacting too much of the ball, you are forcing up through the middle but you are not catching the ball thin enough to generate top spin. The top spin is what creates the dip. So if you find that the ball's going high and constantly going over the crossbar, you need to retrace your steps. Go back to step three, look at the standing foot position and how important it is to be on the upswing as you strike the ball to make sure you generate that top spin. Like any technique, this is going to take a long time to build. So get yourself a big supply of footballs and hit hundreds and hundreds of shots. You will have a eureka moment where you hit a shot exactly how you wanted to, but the moment you're inconsistent. Once you get that eureka moment, keep going. 
What you have to do here is build muscle memory by making that contact over and over and over again. So don't think because you've hit one or two good ones that you've mastered the technique. When you have that eureka moment, those steps need to be repeated so that your brain can remember the steps you took and the biomechanical movements that it takes to get that strike again. So that's what it takes to hit free kicks like Suarez and Messi with real top speed. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it useful, please let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content coming soon and more technique videos. See you next time.